So welcome to this i3 Solutions Group video. Uh, my name is Damien Wells, I'm from Spa Communications, and I'm with Ed Ansett, the founder and chairman of i3 Solutions Group. Ed, welcome. Thank you very much, Damien. Uh, we're, we've got together today to talk about sleep state and the, and the data center, and really what's teed this off is uh, there's articles in the press regarding Amsterdam's imposition or threat of imposition of regulation to force data centers to put servers uh, into sleep state when they're not being used. And obviously that's drawn a response from the data center uh, community. Ed, this isn't exactly a, a new topic, is it for you? No, it's not. We've been uh, looking at the application of sleep states um, to various technologies for some time. Um, it started really with the work we did for the Singapore government back in 2013, yeah, Green Data Centre Technology Mobile, when during that research, um, and prior to that research, I was completely unaware of um, how sleep states were used, but it became evident during that research that was an opportunity for energy conservation in the data centre environment by invoking sleep states. And okay, so there are some sleep states that are used widely by mobile phones. In fact, the reason mobile phones battery life uh, extend as long as they do is because they absolutely depend on the invocation of different types of sleep states to enhance battery performance and battery life. Do you want to just talk us through sleep state technology and, and how it works? Well, principally what sleep states are, are about is um, reducing the power consumption of the, of the processor um, and that's done in a number of ways there are, are different levels of sleep if you like it's, it's, it's kind of analogous to the sleep states that human beings um, have you know from memory I think there are four sleep states and in, in the, it varies in the computer world uh, how many sleep states there are but principally um, how you go through different levels of sleep and then going through each level descending each level if you like the amount of power conserved increases so, you know, a light sleep state, for example, would simply stop the clock, but allow pretty much all of the other processor functions to continue. Then we might do things like, you know, stop the bus clock as well as the main clock. And then getting into deep sleep, we might reduce the bus voltage to one level, um, maybe reduce it even further. And the problem with this is from a performance perspective, as you go deeper and deeper in sleep, the longer it takes for a processor to wake up again, which is an issue. And for the, for the, for the enterprise community as a whole, it really hasn't been something for the most part that they've needed to consider. It's really been something that's applied to mobile platforms for obvious reasons, battery life. But what exactly are the Dutch authorities asking the data center community to do? As I understand it, what they're asking is that the data center operators to ensure that the, the organizations that are their tenants um, operate a sleep state environment. I don't know how that's defined in terms of you know what level of sleep and uh, is required, but principally it's the idea that uh, in, in Amsterdam, uh, if you want to operate a data center, your tenants must invoke sleep states. That's the situation as I understand it. So, the, I mean, the data center community is, has been quite um, uh, quite good at finding energy savings at the physical infrastructure layer. Why, what's the big objection to uh, trying to find these energy savings at, uh, from the IT load? It's very difficult for the data center operators because, in principle, they have no control over the end users and how the end users operate. So, you know, a, a data center operator to principally provides at its most basic level space power and cooling. It doesn't dictate or involve, get involved in any way of the performance the technology itself as a rule. So the data center operator saying, well, look, that's really not our thing. You know, that, what's that got to do with us? It's the end user's behavior that needs to, needs to change. And I think that's their principal argument. You've been publishing stuff on this for nearly a decade now. Do, do you think there's a, there's a problem, oh, there's always been problems, haven't there, uh, between IT and, and the OT, operational technology people. Do you think this is another barrier to them collaborating? Uh, to... No, I don't, I don't. I think this is actually a very, this is, uh, this is not really to do with communication between IT and engineering. This is, this, is, this is a technology function. It's not an engineering function. And, and therein lies the problem from 
a legislative point of view because you know you've got the operators that perhaps rightly say that they you know they have no control over this i do think there's a solution to this by the way i do think there's a solution to this in part so i don't think it's you know it's not going to work i think it can work perfectly well um and i actually do believe it's a good thing to do but i can also understand why the operators are having problems with it all right, well, you can't leave an audience hanging. So what do you think the solution is? Well, I think the thing to do in the first instance, if they haven't already done so, um, the municipality in Amsterdam needs to have direct dialogue with the end users. And that doesn't mean everybody, but certainly, you know, the top 10, the top 20 end users, certainly all hyperscale customers and say, to them, look, if you're going to come to Amsterdam, this is going to be a requirement. So, you know, that's the way it is. It's going to be legislation. You, you're going to have to do it. Now, that's not to say it's easy for them to do. Um, and perhaps a little later on, we can talk about some of the difficulties associated with actually doing this from an enterprise perspective as opposed to a mobile uh, platform perspective. Um, but once they've had the dialogue with the end users, then I think the community of data center owners and operators in Amsterdam really just get their heads together and, and collectively agree one thing, that any incoming tenant, any end user, they collectively say it's a requirement that's now a legislative, legislated requirement that you guys uh, use sleep sets. And what that means, the extent of sleep, the depth of sleep, how it's applied, I really don't know. And I'm not sure the legislation even gets into that depth. But I think the principle of operating sleep states, for me anyway, for a long time has been a no brainer. It's, you know, this is a way. And you've got to remember that the processor is pretty much at the heart of everything. So if you reduce energy consumption at the processor level, that has a ripple effect upstream to the infrastructure, which is, in other words, it reduces infrastructure losses associated with supplying power to the processor, whether that's electrical losses or probably more importantly, current losses could be reduced. So it's important. Obviously, reduced energy probably means reduced carbon footprint. Are we able to sort of quantify what the energy savings might look like? I personally wouldn't know where to start with this. At all. On, a, on a case by case, you'd have to look at you'd have to look at each IT workload. You'd have to determine to what extent in sleep states can be invoked. Because as I said to you earlier, there's a penalty for invoking sleep states, which is time. Yes, you save energy. But if you have an application that respond, needs to respond very quickly, for whatever reason, and plenty of them do need to respond very quickly, obviously they can't be in a deep sleep state and achieve that at the same time. That doesn't mean do nothing. As I said, there's different levels of sleep. When, when you think about mobile phones, and I don't want to oversimplify it, but mobile phones, you know, they don't just wait for a, a long period of inactivity. They, they put a device into an intermediate or low sleep state just between keystrokes. So without doubt, there's an opportunity to do it. The question is, is there a willingness to act to do it? Traditionally, uh, data center managers' jobs has, have, have hinged on keeping the IT load awake. Do you think that's a, an old fashioned view of how the load should work? I think it's a moot point. The, the, the thing is, from a data center operator's point of view, they almost invariably have serverless level agreements that require them to maintain a certain um, availability in terms of power and cooling. Um, and reliability in some cases as well. It's unaffected by this. The, the systems are still there. The, 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 the device goes to sleep. It makes absolutely no difference from a reliability or availability point of view to the data center manager, none whatsoever. If my father worked in a data center, I think I've bored you with that story before, but he was definitely of the opinion that it, it was it, it was in a, in a changing state. It was between being turned on and turned off that a computer was most likely to fail. Do you think there is a is a problem with people having a fear of failure where machines might be a lot more reliable these days, a lot more robust when it comes to an on and off state? Yeah, I think that's a point. I mean, that wouldn't affect the data center operator for the reasons I just explained. As long as the power and the cooling's there, they're unaffected. I think from a performance point of view, um, technology performance point of view, and I've got to be careful, I don't step away from you know, what I can say and, and, and really understand. What I do know is in any engineered system, whenever there is a change of state, there is an increased level of risk. There's always the case that how that transcends um, into um, um, from performance point of view at a software level, I really don't know, but I would imagine there is some risk, but I don't know what that is. In terms of the, the physical infrastructure, then what do you think the impact might be upon the power infrastructure supporting the load? Does it become more complex or less complex? Are there different strains that people haven't experienced before coming onto it? 
Well, I guess this is an interesting point, really, isn't it? If 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 overall um, you take a, you know a, a system as a whole, um, a group of IT workloads as a whole, and as a whole, and you are invoking sleep states, and, and you know, then inevitably there will be some reduction in the amount of energy consumed, and that could um, and probably should um, flow through into uh, a reduction in the infrastructure capacity that's supporting it. But I think that's probably getting ahead of ourselves right now. I think right now the question is really how are we going to get people to invoke sleep states in a way that satisfies everybody. So what steps do you think the industry needs to take now to make sure that their, their workloads remain kind of on and available, uh, uh, but, you know, can still experience it or can still be put into sleep states? OK, so this, again, is on the periphery of my knowledge, but I, I principally group um, applications into those that simply cannot be turned off and have to respond immediately, no matter what. So they are not suitable candidates for sleep states. Okay. Um, then there are other applications that always need to be on, but if it takes a fraction of a second to respond, has no real impact in terms of downside. Um, and then there are other applications, quite frankly, that um, can go into deeper sleep states where the, the reaction time is, um, you know, it can, it can, can be quite, it can be, it's acceptable for it to be an extended period of time. Mm. So you've got to look at the workloads. You've also got to look at, you know, what's going on in the processor. Typically there's many applications running at the same time, a number of cores, and there have been some complexities in the past with Linux, for example, in terms of its use of sleep states I'm aware of. Um, so I, this is not, I realize this is not a simplistic thing, but just because it isn't easy, doesn't mean it shouldn't be done because of the greater good, the benefit of reducing energy consumption, which is, you know, everybody wants to do that. Sure. So you, you think it's in something the industry could and probably should get behind? I think absolutely it should. It's, um, you know, I guess it really depends on your position in terms of energy conservation and, and climate change. But if you are, as I am, you know, very keen to see positive steps taken there, then there are some difficult things that have to be done to achieve that. And this is one of them. Do you think the Dutch Data Centre Association are right to push back immediately? Yes. I, I mean, I guess I, I understand why, because as I said earlier, it's not really within their purview. They do not dictate what their end users do. So the, the only way, and, and, and you completely, and I completely understand that, but really they're kind of caught in the middle here. It, there needs to be a conversation, a dialogue between the authority and the end users. So the end users are given time to make the adjustments that they need to make. And then the data center association needs to come together as one. And as long as they do that, then there's no outliers and say to each and every new tenant, look, this is the requirement in Amsterdam. We have no choice. It's not our idea. We we'll go along with it, but it's not our idea. It's, our, it's legislation. We have to do it. Otherwise, you can't come to Amsterdam. I get it. Do you think this sort of legislation like this might be the, the thin end of the wedge? You know, do you think we might see um, authorities getting more involved in trying to drive the way that data centres are operated uh, to kind of sustainability ends? I think so. I mean, we, must, we won't talk about which country, but one of the technology groups in another country contacted me recently in, on the back of what they've been reading um, from, from Netherlands and said, you know, what do you think? And uh, so I, I, if that's anything to go by, I think, yeah, I think others will be looking at it. Uh, I think we've seen that a little bit with Ireland, haven't we? Other countries watching what's going on with Ireland. Uh, one imagines it's a, it's a small industry, right? You know, the, the Dutch have, have been the first to go down this path. I and mean, once, once, whatever the solution is, once that's resolved, I imagine many other countries, many other municipalities are going to look at this and say, well, you know, we will do this too. <laughs> but, but the poor old Dutch have got to go through the pain of trying to figure it out. That's it. Yeah, you don't get much for being a pioneer, do you, in any uh, You get the, uh, what's it, the pioneers get the arrows and the settlers get the land, isn't it? That's the way it goes, isn't it? Do, yeah. you, do you think, uh, I mean, just going back to, uh, say, things like the CNDCP, uh, the Carbon Neutral Data Centre Pact, do you think that the industry is capable of, of uh, self-regulating towards these sorts of ends, or do you think it's going to require a legislating body to, to force people to be more energy efficient? I think that some things can be done through a voluntary mechanism and some, some meaningful things. If you ask me, there are things like this that, that, that a voluntary organization is almost inevitably going to fail at. 
and, and there are there are like to be many other things as well, you know, such as you know, dare I say, data centers participating in the demand response for the greater good, things like that. Um, so my view is yes, there's a there's a degree. I hope there'll be some success in through um, the, the the cooperation, you know, the voluntary agreements. But if you ask me, I'm outright, which I think you are, do we need legislation? I'm sorry to say, in my mind, there's no question we do. But it's really going to take a dialogue between the legislators and the end users rather than the data centre community in the yeah. in the circumstances. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I said. I mean, data centre community are kind of caught in the middle of this. You, you can't, I mean, they're very limited in terms of what they can do. They can do things with cooling to make that more efficient. They can look at water usage. They can look at power efficiency and so on. But, you know, if you think about it, certainly from, um, you know, if you take into uh, looking at sleep states, there's, that, that, is an, that is a technology function. That's got nothing to do with the data center op operator. Um, and, and, and so it is with, uh, with, with other things, you know, um, just straying back to demand response for a minute. Um, on the face of it, participation in demand response, some of the schemes anyway, isn't going to reduce your carbon footprint individually but it will reduce the national carbon footprint. And so there are things like that. I simply can't see voluntary organizations forcing through. That's got to be legislated. Problem with this at the moment is I, I don't wish to be cynical, but from what I gather, governments are still playing catch up in ten, terms of understanding what the data center industry is all about. And as I said earlier, you, you've been talking and writing about this for the best part of a decade. Do you think it could be another 10 years before we see the, you know, some actual movement on this sleep state stuff? No, not now that no, no, not now the Dutch have done this. I mean, this this will, I mean, I, I it really depends on how successful they are in implementing. The, but if it does go ahead and if they are successful in implementing it, it's to me, it's inevitable that others like-minded other authorities are going to say, well, let's do the same thing as they did. So what advice would you give to uh, co-location companies and their peers right now? Would you tell them to go out and have a conversation with their end users and, and get ready for this sort of stuff? I think they should have dialogue, but I don't think that's going to really move the needle. What's going to move the needle is when an, organ, when an end user wants to move into a territory, whoever is responsible, the authority, in that territory needs to talk to the end users. The data center community is merely hosting this stuff. Mm. It doesn't have much control over it. It, it holds the contracts, um, but it really doesn't have any control on how those users operate. And that, that, that's, okay, that, change, that behavior change, in my opinion, has to come as a result of authorities talking to end users. Brilliant, Ed, thanks very much for that. Thanks, Damien.